Hi, this is Hybrid here. A while ago I was editing a vacation movie in Final Cut Pro 10 and I was taking a break. During this break I took a look at my Tractor Control X1 which is a MIDI controller used for digital DJing and I thought wouldn't it be nice if I could use this controller for editing in Final Cut Pro 10. It has nice buttons, it has four rotary uh, endless controllers so I downloaded some applications and I started programming the X1 for Final Cut. Uh, first I was a bit skeptical, I thought it wouldn't work so well, but after I programmed the hand tool and the zoom function, I realized that it actually worked quite well. And during editing I found myself progr programming more and more functions for the X1. Um, I didn't measure it in any way, but I think the, the use of this controller sped up my editing time with maybe 20, maybe 25%. So if you have an X1 or uh, actually any other MIDI controller lying around, uh, this is definitely worth to give it a try. So this video is about how I set up my uh, Tractor Control X1 uh, in combination with Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, the general idea is that you uh, use the MIDI signals, you convert those into keystrokes, which of course control uh, Final Cut Pro 10. So uh, the idea is really simple and um, here we go. First, of course you need the X1 driver which you probably have on your computer. You also need the Native Instruments controller editor, both from the Native Instruments website. Download and install MIDI Stroke from the website charlieroberts.com slash MIDI Stroke. Also download and install MIDI Monitor from the website snoise.com slash MIDI Monitor. I will try to put the links of those websites down below. Now open the free downloaded programs and open Final Cut Pro 10. Before we begin, not necessary but something really convenient, we are going to set up our desktops. If I press the function free button, we are able to set up our desktops. We are going to use two of those. One with Final Cut Pro, one with all the other programs. Click on the plus icon to create another desktop. Drag the controller editor, MIDI stroke and MIDI monitor on it and make sure Final Cut Pro is on the other desktop. This way you can easily navigate between Final Cut Pro 10 and the controller programs. This by pressing F3 and selecting the desired desktop or by pressing the control key along with the left or right arrow. First put the X1 in MIDI mode by pressing the hot Q along with the shift. The green light indicates that it now sends MIDI signals. First we are going to program the zooming in and out with this rotary controller. When you rotate it, you will see the corresponding knob light up in the controller editor. It shows that continuous controller number 17 is in use. It doesn't tell you which MIDI value it sends, just the general CC number 17. That's where MIDI monitor helps you out. If I turn the knob to the left, you can see that it sends out a number 127. If I turn it to the right, it sends a value of 1. Now we know what is happening MIDI-wise, we can program the keystrokes in MIDI stroke. First make sure that the source is your X1. Click on the plus icon, change the number to 17, which is the CC number, and enter the value of 127, which is for turning to the left. Next we program the keystroke that will be generated when we turn the knob to the left, and let's say that turning left is zooming out. In Final Cut that's command minus, so add a keystroke, we type the minus over here and we check the command box. Let's check it in Final Cut, oh yeah we got a zoomer out. Now zooming in, again add another input, turning right is also on CC number 17 but the value is 1. Add another keystroke which is of course command equal sign. Switch over to Final Cut and voila, we programmed our own little zooming knob. Now we program the hand tool for convenient navigation in the timeline. Let's say we want to activate the hand tool with this button when we press it and when we release it we want it to switch over again to the selection tool. The controller editor shows that this button sends out CC number 21. In MIDI Monitor, when we press the button, we see a value of 127 coming in. When we release it, the controller sends out a value of 0. 
in MIDI stroke, add a controller, change it to 21 and a value of 127. The keystroke that should be generated is the H key, so add a keystroke, change it to the letter H. Add another input, also change it to 21 and a value of 0. Add a keystroke and change that one to the letter A for the selection tool when being released. Let's check it again in Final Cut. Ooh, it works like a charm. So these were two examples that I've shown and I think that will be sufficient for you to start programming your keystrokes. You can do your own programming or if you want you can try my template, I'll put the link down below. Here's the layout of my X1, press pause if you want to check it out. I'll also try to put the link to the template layout file down below. Here's how you can replace your current mini monitor template by mine. In Finder, go to the Go menu and press the Alt key on your keyboard. That's because the user library is hidden in Lion OS X. And click on Library. Go to Application Support, MIDI Stroke, and delete this file and copy my template to this folder. Last thing I want to point out is that you always need MIDI Stroke and the controller editor open in the background when you want to use the controller for Final Cut. You don't have to manually start these programs every time you restart or shut down. Just leave the two programs open when shutting down and make sure to tick the reopen windows when logging back in box. Next time they will open automatically when you turn on the computer. I hope this was useful. If you have any comments please let me know and um, well take care. Bye bye.